Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my January reading wrap-up with a bunch of different mini reviews of all the different mysteries and things I've been reading this month. We have quite a few mysteries, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So the first book I read this month was Buried in the Stacks by Alison Brooke, and this is part of the Haunted Library series. This is book three. I have recommended the... Uh, I think the second book before on my channel actually for Christmas time because it was a Christmas book but this one I have to say was a little bit of a letdown it wasn't bad I gave it three stars on Goodreads so it's not like a regret full read but I didn't care for this one as much in my review I left notes saying that I just felt like this mystery dragged on more than the other two in the series because I've read one and two and those got four or five stars from me, so I did really enjoy them. I still really enjoyed the char the characters. Carrie is our main character. She's a librarian, or like a library director, I want to say. And I like the fact that it's a haunted library and she has this connection with a ghost that no one else does. I think it's a really cool setting. I really like the town. I thought there was a lot of cool... There's a lot of really cool characters, but I just wasn't really wowed by the plot itself. Um, the setup was really good, but like the reveal and stuff just kind of... It was just kind of okay. Like, I, I, I just wasn't as excited. Like, I loved the setting and the characters as per usual, but the plot was a little bit of a letdown for me. However, I still plan on reading more in this series. I would just recommend if you are going to read this series, like, maybe start with one or two, because I think those books did it better. Um, this one was just a little, a little less exciting. All right, so this next one is from one of my favorite series. It's called A Likely Story by Jen McKinley. This is the Library Lovers Mystery Series, and this is book four, no, book six, I'm sorry. So I've actually read quite a few in the series, and this is one of my all-time favorite cozy mysteries. It's featured in my, uh, like, top five cozy mysteries for beginners, which I'll link above if you want to check it out, if you're looking for some good recommendations, if you're trying to find new series and whatnot. This book is great. So the main character, Lindsay, also a librarian. I like my bookish cozy mysteries, as you can tell. The setting of this is in a place called Briar Creek, and it's like a, like a, it feels like a Massachusetts, like, bay area. So there's lots of islands and water and boats and things, which I think is a really cool element to this um, general, like, series and whatnot. But she's delivering these books to these brothers when she finds one of them is um, dead, but the other one is completely missing in action. And these guys, like, they don't leave the island. They're, like, extremely reclusive. They really depend on each other. And so there's, like, this mystery of, did the other brother harm this brother? What happened? Is he fleeing from someone who attacked his brother? Like, all this stuff. And Lindsay has, a, personally, a bit of a special relationship with the brothers because she doesn't... Um, she's one of the few people who actually sees them like face to face because she delivers the books. So she's kind of on this quest to figure out what happened to them. And it has a lot of really great plot elements. I gave this four stars out of five. It was a really enjoyable read. Again, I love this series. It's really great. If you like a bookish cozy mystery, I think this is one of the best ones I've read. It's one of my favorite authors for cozy mysteries and I love it. I thought the character development in this was really good too. I don't love that the series has annoying love triangle. <laughs> um, it's getting better, I think, but it's... I, I just... I don't personally read cozy mysteries much for the romance. It's just not my thing. But I have to say, you know, I understand it. It can be really good for a plot, like, driving, like, different plot lines and stuff. But the, the love triangles... I, I can't stand a love triangle. It drives me crazy. It's, like, the worst trope out there, in my opinion, or one of them. Um, so be warned. There is a bit of that. But otherwise, I love this series. It's one of my all-time favorites. So this was definitely a great read would recommend it. So I actually had two books this month that I ended up DNFing, not finishing, because I just could not make myself read them. Like, I just got so fed up with them for one reason or another. And one of those I was reading for a Valentine's Day themed video I'm working on because I want to put together like a cozy mystery Valentine's Day video because I love reading holiday cozies. And I know a lot of you do as well. And this book, I can't, I can't get through it. It's not, it's just no. Um, this is called Wedding Bear Blues, and it's by Meg, Meg Macy. And this is part of the Shamelessly Adorable Teddy Bear Mystery Series. And as you can see from the cover, this is a really cute book for Valentine's Day. Obviously, it's very thematic. And this, um, this book takes place with the main character having like her friend get married and it's during the Valentine's Day season and I guess the main character, this is the first time I've read anything from this series, but the main character, uh, Sasha and then her sister, they both run this like teddy bear factory where they like 
create teddy bears and stuff and it's like a really unique premise like I it's you know I've never read a cozy mystery with that kind of like career is like the focus of really interesting very thematic for Valentine's Day but like I could not I got this from my library so I'm covering up the the name of my library but I could not stand the characters in this it was just they were so obnoxious I was so annoyed by the main characters um I I didn't care when I came across like like when you're reading and the dead body was found like I just could care less like I just I didn't like the characters I didn't care about the characters I was just annoyed constantly like, the characters were all like very bland they kind of all flew to, like kind of like all like got messed up together like they weren't very distinct so I was having a very hard time keeping track of who was who um, now to be fair, yes, I did jump in mid-series, but I was having a very hard time keeping track and the characters were just annoying. Like, I really didn't like them. I was very turned off by the characters in this, both like the protagonist who you're supposed to be rooting for and other people as well. I just didn't like the characters. I ended up reading like 80 pages in and at that point, like, the murder had happened and I just, I didn't care, like, at all. Um, this book was just sitting on my nightstand for like a week and I was like, Okay, well, because usually when I'm reading a murder mystery that I'm interested in, I'm like going back to that book every single night until I finish it because I want to know who did it, you know? Like, that's a book I don't put down for a week. This book, I didn't read it for like a week and I had to like force myself to revisit it and even then I was like, I can't get through this. So, I have not read anything by Meg Macy. Let me know if you've read this series and maybe I should go back and read the first one. If you like the series, let me know. Let me know if you've read anything else by this author. Um, this just wasn't it for me personally. This next book was mind-blowing. This was a like five stars. This was like absolutely could not put it down. I was consumed by this book. I was the the ending my mind was blown. I'm still like I'm still <laughs> like it's been two week I think two weekends two at least two weeks since I finished this book and I still am thinking about it like it was so good and that is it's one of my favorite authors no surprise uh, it's my cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier so she is a 19th century gothic writer um, who does like a lot of suspense like thriller type books so this is not like this isn't like your classic cozy mystery it's definitely not you know humorous or like as cutesy or fun as some of these other ones are but it's nothing that's graphic either so if you do enjoy a suspenseful read that's not graphic this is something I think you would probably enjoy. This book had me on the edge of my bed. This book is rivaling Rebecca for me. This is, Rebecca is one of my all-time favorite pieces of fiction, like, for any genre. Like, I love this book. It's so good. If you haven't read it, definitely check it out. Um, but My Cousin Rachel is the first one that really rivaled Rebecca for me. I read some of her other works and I really really liked them but this one actually ties like Rebecca for me, My Cousin Rachel. So if you haven't read that because I know Rebecca is far more popular and well known than My Cousin Rachel, check it out. I actually just checked out the DVD from the library too. Like they came out I believe in 2018 with a pr or 2017 like recently with a new uh, movie motion picture adaptation of the book so I'm really curious to see how they do it. But basically the premise of this book is it's about my cousin Rachel and this is another great book that's set in Cornwall so it has a very similar atmosphere to Daphne du Mars' Rebecca and if you like atmospheric writing where you just can feel the fog and like the tendrils of plants coming down around you this you'll love her writing style it's so atmospheric like it's it's perfect it, it's it, it's just it's just perfect there's <laughs> I really um, it's, it's some of the most beautiful writing I think you'll ever read honestly it's some of the most beautiful writing I've read but my cousin Rachel basically the the general plot line of it is that the main character is a younger man I think he's about like 25 or so and he has an older cousin Ambrose who's like his caretaker and he has to leave um, Cornwall periodically like for warmer weather conditions down south like in Italy for his health which was I think kind of common at the time among the wealthy to leave for better like weather for their lungs and stuff especially because England has pretty harsh weather from my understanding and he meets his cousin Rachel when he's out there the two of them fall in love and shortly after Ambrose ends up dead so 
then the um, main character, the young man, is suspicious of his cousin Rachel and of course they end up meeting and there's just this... She's so mysterious. <laughs> Everything about her is mysterious. This book will have you guessing the entire time. Like, did she do something to Ambrose? Did she poison him? Did she, you know, stress him out and give him, like, uh, you know, a heart attack? Like, did she actually, like, contribute to his death? Or was it just an accident? Like, you will have no, like, there's gonna be so many times during this book where you will be convinced 110% one way or the other about Rachel and if she's, like, a good person, if she's a bad person, if she's just kind of a normal person caught in bad circumstances, you'll be convinced so many different ways before you finish this book. And even then, like, your brain just, I, I can't, I, I still, like, I don't know, you know? Like, everything about this book is so suspenseful. I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, be warned, your your brain will just continue to, <laughs> to think about this book over and over because it's so well done. She's such, a, Daphne Du Mar is so amazing at weaving together a suspenseful tale and just really exploring the gray side of the human mind and like motivations and stuff and her writing, again, it's so atmospheric, like you will be sucked into this world. I read this in like under 36 hours, I want to say, um, and it's like a 400 page book, so it's, you know, pretty quick reading. Um, I basically took like an entire Saturday and read like at least 200 pages in one day almost in one sitting because I could not put it down because I just like I had to know I had to I had to get to the end so I highly highly recommend it it was such a good read it's I need to like own this book I plan on eventually buying this book because I checked it out from the library it's so amazing so definitely check it out if you like a suspenseful read okay another book I could not put down I read this this last weekend um, while I was getting over all, all of this, um, fun stuff, and this, such a good book, this is such a good book, this is the first in a series, a newer series, it's called And Then There Were Crumbs, and this is by Eve Calder, or Calder, and it's a cookie house mystery, classic, cozy, culinary bakery mystery, which I know is a very, like, overdone career in the cozy mysteries, but a lot of people, including myself, I think really love the baked goods and the fun stuff with that. Um, as is the case with a lot of cozy mysteries, this starts with our protagonist, Kate, who is, I don't know if it says her age, but she's, I don't know, probably like in her late 20s, early 30s, somewhere around there. Um, and she has just recently broken it off with her fiance after finding out that he was cheating on her and she was having a really hard time in Manhattan with her job and other things and she's like a professionally trained pastry chef so she picks up her life and she moves to Coral Cay, Florida which is somewhere that she's had dreams of going and it's actually where she had planned on spending part of her honeymoon because the wedding was like a month away or something um, when she found out that her fiance was cheating which yikes. Um, I can't imagine. That's absolutely, absolutely terrible. Um, so she ends up moving without a job and she only has a bit of money from the honeymoon that she left with and so she's living in a hotel trying to find a job desperately and she ends up coming across this very, uh, kind of battered, broken down old bakery in like the main square area called the Cookie House and the characters in this are just so so well done. Like, it's really heartwarming. It has a lot of the basic cozy tropes that can make a story a little basic sometimes for a series, but the author does it so well. The characters are really, really heartwarming and believable. Like, they feel very fleshed out. I absolutely love, what is her name? Maxie. I love Maxie. She's the next door um, neighbor to the cookie house. She has a flower shop and uh, Kate ends up staying with her for a bit and they, their friendship that blossoms is just so beautiful between these women supporting each other and basically a quick you know quick uh, summary of this that's on the back nothing like spoilery but it is on you know summary of the back um, Kate Kate's boss at the cookie house Sam who is this kind of grumpy older man who unfortunately lost his wife cookie thus the cookie house, a few years back is implicated in the murder of this like really awful like 
entrepreneur in the area who's like trying to buy up land and pressures like people into things and it's a very sleazy like businessman type and he's implicated in the murder of that and taken to jail and his business is already like in the red like very much struggling since his wife has passed um, so Kate and her friend Maxie take it upon themselves to get it back up and running and keep it running while he's in jail and they start to uncover different clues and things in his favor and this book is just so beautifully written. Um, I just love this book. Like, it was a really, really good first in a series. I already have the second one called Sugar and Vice on hold at the library, and I'm really excited for it. It was just a really good classic, you know, warm-hearted, more like light-hearted, cozy mystery, but it was done perfectly. Like, just perfectly. So, highly recommend that. One I do not recommend. This is called As Gouda As Dead, and this is by Aves Amory, I want to say. Yeah, a no, Avery Ames, I'm sorry. And this is part of the Cheese Shop Mystery. This is number six in the series, and again, this was a, a book I picked up in preparation for Valentine's Day. This is a, a book that's taking place during Valentine's Day. I thought it would be a good video, uh, a good book for the video coming up, and I, I, t I hated this book. Um, I gave it two stars on Goodreads and that was maybe a little generous. It just, it was so convoluted, the plot, like, the book was like all over the place, the plot fell all over the place, it felt like clues just kind of landed in the protagonist's lap, like she didn't really do anything to, like, w like she wasn't really sleuthing, you know? I'm not saying like a, you know, a amateur sleuth can't get a break here and there, but like, it didn't really feel like she was trying. It just, I wasn't really excited by the ending, like, it just was a very subpar mystery in my opinion, it just wasn't engaging, I felt very, like, bored multiple times throughout it, so, unfortunately, that's not gonna make the Valentine's Day video, it did not, it, it, I just wasn't interested at all, like, I was like, okay, um, so I, unfortunately, that one I did not, I think I finished it, but like barely. I'm kind of questioning why I finished it because it just was a chore to kind of get through, unfortunately. So, would not recommend that one. Okay, this next book was amazing. This was another first in a new series. However, this wasn't a new author to me, so I'm not surprised that I really liked it. This is by Paige Shelton, who, if you are familiar, she's written The Stolen Letter, she's written Thin Ice, she's written the, like, a lot of different cozy series, and I love the ones that I've read so far. I've read everyone in this um, Scottish bookshop mystery series. It's an absolutely incredible. I highly recommend. One of my favorite series actually. So I wanted to read some of her other cozy mysteries and this is called To Helvetica and Back and it's a dangerous type mystery which really amazing premise. I love how unique the um, the uh, like job that this main character has. So the main character's name is Claire and she lives in Star City which I believe is in Colorado. Colorado, I want to say, or it's in a ski resort town. I pictured it in Colorado, but I, I don't know. I can't remember now if it actually is in Colorado, but she works at this shop called The Rescued, the Rescued Word with her grandfather, Chester, and one, Chester is a delightful old man. <laughs> He's so fun. He has such a good, like, he has such a good personality. He's full of, like, wit and wisdom, and I love his relationship with Claire, who's in her 30s, and then her relationship with her niece, who works in the shop as well, named Marion, who's 16. And so it's really fun to see, like, three, the, um, like, three generations of family working at this shop. And the shop is basically a place that repairs old typewriters, sells typewriters. They also do, like, some printing and, like, restoration as well. Um and sell like some stationery. I think they do some personalized stationery, but really cool with the typewriters. You can tell Paige Shelton really did her research with the way that she like easily incorporates information about typewriters in there. Like I learned quite a bit about typewriters while I was reading this. And this book is super interesting. Basically, uh, premise is like Claire is just working and she's been working at the shop like her whole life. So this is actually pretty unique for a first in a series because the main character didn't actually move to the town or she wasn't like returning to her hometown she's actually like lived there a long time like her whole life it sounds like so I kind of enjoyed that cozy trope being broken because it's quite overdone um, but basically they are repairing this antique underwood typewriter for another customer and this man shows up at the store and demands that they turn over the typewriter and, like, he's just very aggressive, he's very much in their face, they call the cops, 
and whatnot and he leaves and they end up the next day finding him dead in the alley and of course you know Claire and her family didn't have anything to do with him dying but they're you know trying to figure out what happened to this man and who he is because nobody in the small town recognizes him either so he must be like an outsider to the town and they're trying to figure out why he was so gung-ho about getting this typewriter because it's not like particularly valuable it's very worn out like there's nothing very special about it and it's just the way the mystery unfolds is so well done there's always with Paige Shelton there's always very unique elements to like restoration and antiques and things in her Scottish bookshop mysteries and as well as this one here and I really just enjoyed it it was so engaging the characters were super fun I really liked them I rooted for them they're very again believable that's kind of my word I guess for this video believable characters they felt very like fleshed out and real and yeah you just really root for them I really enjoyed this I thought it was a really unique uh setup with the typewriter store because I've never personally been in one of those stores I've never even used a typewriter um but you know I just find it interesting so it was a really good read I would definitely in like I would definitely pick it up and they're just very interesting because one of the main premises of the plot is why would someone kill over this like dusty old typewriter like it's not worth much it's very worn it's nothing particularly special like you could buy one online like identical and so they're trying to figure out that throughout the book and it's a really good book I definitely recommend it okay so this next one it was just a short story I read this was from the Agatha Christie or Hercule Poirot uh, 50 sh complete short stories so this is actually the first time I've read Hercule Poirot I've read other Agatha Christie uh, like full novels but I haven't read any of the Hercule Poirot ones and I was very excited my parents got this for me for Christmas so I was very excited and so I sat down today actually and just uh, on my like lunch and I decided to read the first one which was only 15 pages so it's definitely a short story and that was The Affair at the Victory Ball and I'm hooked. Hercule Poirot, like, move over Sherlock Holmes. Like, I really, I started reading Sherlock Holmes last year and really enjoyed it. And I'm still planning on reading more. I have some of his books actually right here, this, like, collection of novels here. Um, I plan on reading more of those. I really enjoy them. However, Hercule Poirot is so funny. Like, he's such a funny man. I love it. I thought he was hilarious. He was so sharp. I really like the way Christie describes people. I find that it's a little bit easier to follow than Sherlock Holmes um, and Sir Conan Arthur Doyle, even though I enjoyed that writing as well. So I'm a huge fan. I thought this was such a good mystery. In 15 pages, to be able to have such an elaborate mystery that makes total sense, like the reveal was super exciting, it made complete sense. It wasn't like a super basic mystery. Like there was a lot of elements that had to come together for the mystery to make sense. And she does it in 15 pages. And that just blows my mind because then I have like other books like I have over here that I've been talking about where I'm talking about the plot being unengaging and boring and they have like three to 400 pages to do something with it. And Agatha Christie walks in with 15 pages and she does this mind-blowing complex mystery that's just so well done and interesting and you're on the edge of your seat the entire time you're reading. I mean there's a reason she's a legend. I, it was so good. So I absolutely recommend um, if you have not read anything from Agatha Christie I would recommend uh, checking it out. I have personally really liked The Body in the Library which was a Miss Marple one um, but now I'm, I'm getting into Hercule Pro as well and this was just excellent. And, like let me know below what are your favorite Agatha Christie's. I'm looking for recommendations because she has so many books um, that it's kind of a little overwhelming to decide where to start but this one that I started with The Affair at the Victory Ball was excellent. I kind of think I'm gonna maybe read one of these like before bed each night because it's they're about 15 pages each so it's a pretty you know eat like I can do that before bed for my for myself and I'm just so excited and if you're looking for a great collection this is a really nice beautiful like feels really nice beautiful gift so if you have a mystery lover in your life or you enjoy them or you're looking for a great collection this is a really really nice volume so thank you again mom and dad and yeah highly recommend this was really really cool Okay, the last one that I just finished, um, haven't even added it to my Goodreads yet. This is The Coloring Crook, a pen and ink mystery novel by Krista Davis. This is the second one in the series. And 
I loved this. It's, it's so good. I actually bought this off of Amazon used because my library had the first one in this series, but then they didn't have the other two that have come out yet, that have come out since, uh, which I hate when my library does that. They have like the first one in the series that you get hooked on it and then you go to check out the second one and it's, they don't have it or the third one, or the fourth one, and you're like, ah! Um, I, I have, uh, my library does have a request function. You can request uh, the library to purchase things, so definitely check if your library has that as too. I think that's a pretty common thing. So I have done that before, but this one I did actually purchase, and it's excellent. Absolutely excellent. This is such a unique, fun premise, too. It's, it's rather bookish, so the main character is called Flory Fox, and she is a bookshop manager, but also a coloring book artist, and they sell coloring books in the uh, store as well. So it has like a coloring book theme to it. And she also incorporates like her sketches with her amateur sleuthing because at the end of the day, oftentimes she will be on her, um, like her, uh, she's renting a carriage house uh, from her employer actually. And she'll be there and she'll be sketching different people's faces or different clues and things. And those will kind of come together in a fun way sometimes to help her solve the mystery, which I think is a really cool element. I'm not personally artistic in the way where I like sketch things, but I'm always fascinated by people that are. So I find that to be a really fun like addition to the amateur sleuthing. And Flory is just such a fun interesting character. I like, I wish she could be my friend in real life. She sounds so fun. And she is a great book bookstore manager. Basically, she has, um, at the bookshop, she has a group of different people who get together who are coloring book fans. And they sit there with coffee and snacks and they color and, you know, discuss their lives and all that kind of stuff. You know, fun, like kind of like a book club. And one day, one of the members actually comes in. She's like a big uh, estate and like yard sale shopper and she came across the oldest color known coloring book and it's actually quite valuable um and it's like this really old floral coloring book with sketches and stuff and it's quite valuable and flory looks at it and is able to uh like officiate it saying that it is authentic and so she puts it online for sale um, because it, it's something that would really change her financial position, allow her to buy a house. Like, she's been down on her luck for many years, this woman. So she's really excited about that. Unfortunately, tragedy strikes, and the coloring book goes missing, and her friend ends up dying under mysterious circumstances. So Flory then is on the case trying to figure out what happened. There's a series of other crimes and things that happen throughout the book. It's very, it's very fast-paced. Like, I found this to be quite the page-turner. And I just, again, I really love Flory. I think she's a great character. I really like the other characters in the um, coloring book club. I think they're all really cool. They were interesting characters. And I like the premise. I just like the coloring book element. I'm not actually a big color, colorer, colorer? That word sounds strange to me for some reason. I think that's the right word, but I'm not a huge colorer. Like I have like one coloring book, like a Disney adult coloring book that I occasionally do. But it's just like a really fun premise, so I thought it was just a really original one. I haven't read anything else by Krista Davis. Let me know. Oh, so I guess she's also the author of the Domestic Diva series, which I have heard about, but I have not read. The first one in the series is called Color Me Murder, which I would recommend. It was a really good read. And yeah, I definitely want to get the third one. I believe there's just three out right now, I want to say. But it's a really great book. This book is... Um, centered in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. It's got a really cute, very like traditional feeling setting. It's just a really great cozy. It's classic cozy mystery. Really enjoyed this. I love the coloring book premise and I think Flory's a great character. So if you like cozies, I would check it out. And that is going to be the end of my reading wrap up for this month. I feel like I've been talking forever. I apologize. I hope my voice you know, kept up for this. Um, if you enjoy mystery content, I hope you'll hit subscribe. I do upload mystery videos on my channel every single week. Definitely check out a playlist. I'll leave some playlists and other videos you might like if you enjoy mysteries in the description for you to check out. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm so excited. See you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye!